Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and um, bow our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, for this amazing day that you gave us, these special hours that we were able to dwell with you in. And Lord, as we come to a close for this day, we're just so thankful that we can come together and, um, and worship you together one last time before, um, before your Sabbath is done. Father, we just ask that you will please cleanse our hearts, make us clean to be able to come to you tonight. And we ask that you to fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to understand um, whatever it is you need us to learn in order to prepare us for your week ahead. We ask you to be with us now, and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, I'm just, I have a short devotional. Um, I just got to share my screen here. Um, trying to see which one it is. I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. Um, this is taken from, let me open it up here because I, I copied and pasted it onto Word. But it's the Reflecting Christ um, devotional. And this is the April 30th one. Um, I chose this one. I read through a, a few different devotionals for uh, April 30th. And I just really liked this one the most out of all of them. Um, just as an idea of, um, you know, like what, what should we end the Sabbath with to focus on um, as we go into the week. So again, this is Reflecting Christ, um, devotional, April 30th. It's called, We Are to Reveal Christ's Love and Joy. That's the title of it. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. In the great measureless gift of the Holy Spirit are contained all of heaven's resources. It is not because of any restriction on the part of God that the riches of his grace do not flow earthward, earthward toward men. If all were willing to receive, all would become filled with his spirit. It is the privilege of every soul to be a living channel through which God can communicate to the world the treasures of his grace, the unsearchable riches of Christ. There is nothing that Christ desires so much, oh, sorry, let me get rid of this, um, as agents who will represent to the world his spirit and character. There is nothing that the world needs so much as the manifestation through humanity of the Savior's love. All heaven is waiting for channels through which can be poured the holy oil to be a joy and blessing to human hearts. Christ has made every provision that his church shall be a transformed body, illumined with the light of the world, possessing the glory of Emmanuel. It is his purpose that every Christian shall be surrounded with a spiritual atmosphere of light and peace. He desires that we shall reveal his own joy in our lives. The indwelling of the spirit will be shown by the outflowing of heavenly love. The divine fullness will flow through the consecrated human agent to be given forth to others. The son of righteousness has healing in his wings. So from every true disciple is to be diffused an influence for life, courage, helpfulness, and true healing. 
the religion of Christ means more than the forgiveness of sin. It means taking away our sins and filling the vacuum with the graces of the Holy Spirit. It means divine illumination, rejoicing in God. It means a heart emptied of self and blessed with the abiding presence of Christ. When Christ reigns in the soul, there is purity, freedom from sin, the glory, the fullness, the completeness of the gospel plan is fulfilled in the life. The acceptance of the Savior brings a glow of perfect peace, perfect love, perfect assurance. The beauty and fragrance of the character of Christ revealed in the life testifies that God has indeed sent his Son into the world to be its savior. There is peace in believing and joy in the Holy Ghost. Believing brings peace and trusting in God brings joy. Now there's a few things I wanted to look at with this. If just going back up um, where it says uh, here in this section right here, if, you, if you're able to see it um, on the screen, the paragraph that says, Christ has made every provision that his church shall be a transformed body, illumined with the light of the world, possessing the glory of Emmanuel. It is his purpose that every Christian shall be surrounded with a spiritual atmosphere of light and peace. He desires that we shall reveal his own joy in our lives. When I read this part, it made me think of what we were recently reading when um, in Desire of Ages, when Jesus had come to be baptized and um, that there was, he didn't look like anything physically that would have um, stood out as a, a savior, a, as a leader, as the king that they were waiting for, the Messiah they were waiting for. But she says that um, he, the countenance, it was more of the countenance, like he had this peace about him. He had this look to him that um, would draw people to him. Um, and, and then not only in that, but then in his words, even when he would speak, but that's later, but in the, but in the, in the book, but, um, but what we know about, about Jesus then is that with, with the, um, the way that his life was, there was, as she's saying here, like a spiritual atmosphere of light and peace. And that light is a light we can't fully comprehend because it's it's not a light that's illumined by the sun, a physical light that we understand. It's um it's a light that that's illumined from having um not not necessarily always happiness because even Jesus had a really hard life, but it was a peace in him because everywhere he went he had his father. And as it says all the way down here at the bottom, believing brings peace and trusting in God brings joy. And that is, those are the two things that Jesus lived by. I don't know why it's not highlighting me that for me. Um, but the very, very end here, um, that is what Jesus lived by. He believed in and on his father and he trusted in God always. So he had this peace about him and this joy. And it wasn't one of those ecstatic joys where he's just constantly happy because again, he had a really hard life. But it was um, the joy he would have would have been like when it's a pleasure to be around someone. They're uh, looking to the positive and things. Um, they always have something nice to say to you. Um, and they just, they seem happy, you know, like even if they're going through something really difficult, they still seem content 
and um and 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 ha uh, like a happy contentment because i don't want to say happiness because again sometimes that can be on the emotional aspect of it and um that's not necessarily where god is coming from it's the it's a greater something greater in us that settles within us and stays there as just a constant contentment there's no reason to fear there's no reason to worry as long as um, we've taken it to God. We just know that he's going to work it all out. So any concern just goes out the window. Any worry about time frame or lack of uh, lack of whatever is needed for the thing, um, uh, whatever we can't see, uh, whatever we don't know because it hasn't happened yet. All of those things that Satan uses to try to uh, create a sense of fear and apprehension or anxiety, um, uh, all of those things are gone. We're just, we trust in our Father, and that's the bottom line. That's the way Jesus lived, and um, so that's the way Jesus lived, and, and that's what he wants in us by his Holy Spirit. It says, a spiritual atmosphere of light and peace that's what it says um <laughs> my mom is on the phone sorry she's on the phone and she came to ask a question and she doesn't know that we're on this right now um but he desires that we shall reveal it's his own joy in our lives and that's what we have to remember too as we go about this week you know, we're always supposed to f focus on this every day, and, and we say this every week, but once again, let's say it. As we get ready for this specific week, let's remember to give our lives over to Christ. Let's not forget to bring everything to him. Whatever we think even is the smallest, unnecessary thing to ask him to help us with or just to take over on behalf of us, everything we're supposed to be putting into his hands because that's a that's fully sabbathing in god and that's what the sabbath day is supposed to teach us it's not just a day to get away from the world it's a day that's supposed to be teaching us how to be truly resting in christ every moment of all seven days of the week and um and the more that he dwells in us it's not for our sake it's for the sake of others because god is never god is never doing anything um uh specifically in a in a uh, self-centered way so when he does something for us or to us it's never going to be just for us singly either because then we can take that as a self-centered or selfish way it's always going to pour outwardly to others as well. Um, there's something else here. Where is it? The acceptance. If you can see that highlighted there in this, um, this part of the paragraph, but I'll read it anyway, though. The acceptance of the Savior brings a glow of perfect peace, perfect love, perfect assurance. Um, that's what we the state we would live in if we are truly walking in christ and to be honest i challenge myself and you guys to take that into prayer tonight before you go to bed and each morning um, and each day as we go through this week pray to god and ask him to help help you accept him fully and wholeheartedly in this in that in the given day and let there be a, a sense of perfect peace love and assurance that you walk in that it glows outwardly and people are asking you what is it about you today there's something different you know um or you know how are you so happy in this moment right now when everyone else is worried um let something like that happen where then God can glorify his name because you right then in that moment can bear testimony of what he's doing in just in this one week 
because it's because we asked for it. <laughs> so make that a challenge for you this week with um with God, you know? And he will. He always fulfills his his side. Um it's just us. Um uh, let me see. Is there anything Oh, one more thing, one more thing before I hand it over to you guys to see if there's anything that you guys would like to say about this. The very end where it says there is peace in believing and joy in the Holy Ghost. Believing brings peace and trusting in God brings joy. Um, that last sentence when I was reading it, when when you see statements like that, you know that you want to reflect on it to really take in what what it means. So I tend to to help me reflect on it a little bit better. I like to flip the things around to to say it the other way so that maybe it gives a little bit of a different light to it. And so that last sentence, in order to have peace, I have to believe. And in order to have joy, I have to trust in God. That's what that sentence says to me when I flip it around. Um, and, and, and to be able to break it down, peace or um, believing and trusting in God, they are the similar, but they are also separate. Believing God means that you're believing that he exists, that what he says is true, that all of this stuff that we've learned is real. We're believing in him. We are accepting that that this is not just some crazy idea, some strange religion. Uh, people think, you know, that if you believe in God, you're just caught up in a cult and society has gotten you caught up in, in formalism. Uh, you know, um, we've, we've uh, by believing in God, we have decided that these words, his Bible, his truth is real and he does exist. And by believing in God and knowing his word, we are taking on all of those promises that he made. So we believe in and on him. He's the one we turn to whenever we need help. That's believing on him. And so the peace is formed by believing believing that he is real and if he's real then he his word is true and if his word is true then it means he's going to do all of the things he says he will do in our lives and in the lives of uh, even our loved ones and that can bring a peace because we don't have to worry then and then as we walk in that situation that we've given over to him by believing in him, then while we're walking, we're trusting. Trusting in God is a tidge different because it means that the whole time we're going, we're not looking to the left or looking to the right to get distracted and then have doubt. We are just trusting that if he says, go this way, this is the way we're going to go. If we're supposed to go towards the path that is leading to the Jesus on the cross, then that's where we're going to keep our eyes. We're going to trust in him. And all that will do is bring joy because then we're not focusing on and distracted by the worries all around us. We have a joy. We can see the thing ahead. We can see God and his promises ahead. And we know that they're sure and that they're good, that they're good. So um, before we go into prayer, is there anything that anyone would like to add um, or share about this reading? I think what I find interesting is, you know, um, when you go to church and when you learn and you get with your brothers and sisters at church and you notice that it's so easy to get along with everyone. It's so easy and peaceful, even at your homes that, and even when you're at work, there's no disruption of fights or angry, or you're not involved in any of those, you know, issues. So it's, 
it, it's, it seems like, you know, you become more like what God wants you to be, but we have so much to work on. So the prayer that we're doing tonight is to help us perfect what we struggle with, because, you know, I do see that, you know, like I, I've grown so much, but I know I have so much to still grow on. And I'm grateful and thankful that God shows us that because, you know, I don't think that I could ever be perfect, but with God, he can help me make a lot less mistakes than I fall into. So that's something that I open pray for, you know, and that I will be ready, just like all my brothers and sisters and everyone out there that don't even know God, that they get that relationship, that all of us are ready and God will accept us there. Amen. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share? All right, well, um, well Mary, oh yes, Donna, go ahead. Um, with a song this morning, uh, I think we all want to be ready and waiting for Gabriel's trumpet. So we know we're going home. Mm -hmm. We all want to be, we all want to feel the joy when that day comes or night comes. I don't think it's going to be too many more years. So we better get on the right road and um, really ask him, please, please, Lord, lead me, guide me so that we are ready. Because I know we all have shortcomings that we're trying to overcome. And uh, this is where we would go to him and say, please, Lord, block those things out. Block them out. I only want you. I only want you to be my most important thing. So would you please help me get ready to meet you when your son comes after us? So. I think that's something that no matter what, how good we are, we still have something there. And he's the one that's going to help us jump that hurdle. You know, and I love that even in his word, he even put reassurances of that. You know, he tells us that he'll be, he'll finish the work he began in us and that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. You know, I, I love those two verses and I never forget them because that's what helps me remember when Satan wants to make me feel bad about my shortcomings. I, you know, just turn to Christ and I say, Lord, I know you're still working on me. And um, and I and, and I thank him, too, for helping me to see um, the shortcomings that he needs me to currently see, you know. We have to thank him for that too. You know, uh, God isn't the one that wants to make us feel guilty about things. Um, Satan is, because the guilt is what shames us and pulls us away from God. So we will have a moment of of um, feeling guilty, but that's part of repentance. And but uh, we're supposed to turn right to him and then hold on to his promises, reminding us, refreshing us, telling us. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Don't let Satan tell you that I'm going to leave you. And I will finish the work I began. You just have to trust me. So um, God is just so wonderful to give us. And then there's so many more scriptures than just those two that we can hold on to when we uh, feel like we need, we're, we're beginning to doubt where we are or the path that we're on. Um, as long as we're giving our lives to Christ, as long as we're giving our situations to Christ, he'll work it all out. And that's one of the things that I love about him so much. You know, he makes it so easy. He makes it easy um, to just remember and believe that um, he'll finish it for us, you know. Well, you know, if we let our light shine. Mm. Uh, even in the smallest things, a kind word to somebody, 
and with a God bless you afterwards, or maybe even a prayer real quick with them. Um, if enough of us do that, pretty soon there's going to be a lot of light shining out to others. And uh, I know sometimes you feel, oh, I, I don't know if that's the right time. Take a chance. Take a chance because God's with you. Absolutely. And, you know, it's also whenever those things come up, that's the Holy Spirit's prompting. And we're supposed to be, you know, have enough uh, connection or have enough prayer time with God and not just praying, but listening. I don't know if anyone has ever taken the time while they're praying and speaking to God to stop and just be quiet for a little bit before saying something else because God has a lot to say. We just don't always listen enough. And it's a communication, it's a conversation we're actually having with him. Uh, so it's not just supposed to be one way. And um, and the, the more, the closer we get to God in our communion time with him, then the more we can hear his him when he speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. And then when we're out in the world, we'll know what his voice is. And if that prompting is coming from a, a selfish self-centeredness within us, or if that prompting is actually coming from God and we'll know what to act on. Even in that, God is just so great to uh, guide us the right way, even in, even in those things. But you're absolutely right, Donna. The more we act upon what God asks us to do, then um, the more often he'll do it, the greater his light will shine through us and the more people that are doing it, then the greater his light will shine through the world. All right, well, let's, um, I'm gonna say, you know, that for us to bow our heads in prayer, but there are certain people that I am gonna lift up. Um, I have a, my list here. Um, I'm going to lift up, um, Pauline and Raphael and their families and, um, uh, Donna, I have that woman, Kelly, um, yeah. and lift up Michelle and Renee and Scott. I'm going to lift up Mackenzie and, um, um, Milagros and Clyde and his wife and, um, uh, John and Marilyn, I don't know how Susan is doing, but I was going to lift her up as well. Um, in addition to these people, though, um, is there anyone else that we want to yeah. hold in prayer? Yes. Carol Brecher. Yes. Okay. I want to, can I tell you a little something about why I'm saying that? Sure. Give a prayer of thanks along with the, just the prayer her healing she is six years in her um with the cancer that she's in she's been six years in remiss, remission so there's a praise and then the other is her par parkinson is really taking its toll on her and um i'm not putting anybody on the spot this is only if you want to uh, i just found out today that her birthday is the 13th and so is um I think it's the 13th and so is Martinez, by the way. And um, her daughter has taken her mother once again to Hawaii. Her daughter has, she, she dotes on her mother and her father and um, she'll do anything and everything to help them. And one thing she does is she knows her mother loves to go to Hawaii and just sit there and drink in the loveliness, just sitting on the beach and, and everything. So her daughter is making sure she's going to be there. But she, they're there now. Also, um, she said, can, and she just wrote to a few people saying, can you do a small thing for my mother's birthday? Just, a, it's not expensive, just a little bit. She said, would you just write a few words to her in a card, birthday card, and mail that to her? That's where it gets expensive, the postage. I mean, that's her words. And uh, if anybody would like 
who we've been praying, we've been praying for, if any of you would like um, to send a card, and then you would just have to say Bonita Springs. If I'd had a time, I would have had everybody who's been in church sign it. So she'd get a card with a lot of people who've been praying for. And she's been to our church. She and her daughter, when they came down, would come to the church. They finally found out when we were having services. And uh, they showed up to surprise Michelle and I. So, uh, but I've, and she has told me to tell people thank you for all the prayers. She appreciates them. Because every now and then when we talk on the phone or we text, I don't tire her out. I don't want to tire her out. She gets extremely exhausted. Um, I'll mention the people at church are still praying for her. And she says, you tell them I'm saying thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to send her a card, just uh, contact me and I'll give you the Hawaiian address. <laughs> All right. All right. Amen. Uh, John and Marilyn, I think you guys were going to share something. Just that uh, Mackenzie went to a wedding today and uh, we uh, got some really nice pictures. It was across the state, so, you know, it wasn't anywhere nearby us, but we're hopeful that he's, we're hopeful that he's making some progress and, and uh, you know, kind of getting back into a normal swing of things. But he, uh, it's been uh, kind of testing because we still haven't seen him since we've been back up north. We want to thank you all for the prayers because I know those are making a difference. Mm -hmm. Another thing was we heard that there was a tornado in South Fort Myers this evening. This evening and I'm just concerned for the people in that area. Wink, that's, Winkler that's where our and, place is in South Fort Myers. Well, but it was Winkler and Gladiolus where it was. Oh, we enjoyed the rain. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got what you call a gully washer of rain. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was right there. dark clouds. I was leaving Marion's after spending a little bit of time with her. And sure. uh, I saw those clouds and I thought, whoa, whoa. Mm. And I, I got out to, uh, to 41 just off of Coconut down there by the mall. And I saw the sprinkles and I thought, oh, I'm going to get rained on. And it did. We had to drive. We were on the 50 mile an hour road. We were going 20 and 30 and 40 yeah. depending on vision. So it was raining all the way home. And I just said, I'm not going to sit in the car. I'm just going to get wet. So I got out and came in. But uh, <laughs> I kind of wondered when I when that, that rain came. Uh, those are mean looking clouds. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a. Uh, it was like that here too. It got suddenly really cold and yeah. um, could see the clouds going fast. Uh, John and Marilyn, do you have any contacts of your neighbors there that you can ask them to check on your home or would you oh, need yeah. us to go oh, up yeah. there? No, no, it's, we do. We have a guy that watches it. We pay him. Okay. He'll, he'll let us know if there's problems, yeah, I, but thank you, Mary. Thank you anyway. That's yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and I think Susan is, Sue is having her, uh, you know, it's post um, COVID problems, I think, but I don't, yeah. we don't know for sure. It's just. But one good thing is that we've been keeping her, her son informed of what's going on. And he's coming from California today to be with her for a while. Oh, good. Now, has her her son and daughter already had that time together? Oh yes, Absolutely. they have, right? Because you told me that they they got along while they were there helping her and stuff. Somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. No, no I know it was like a little bit, but it was something. Yeah, as long <laughs> as they didn't speak too much. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but that's good. It's always uh, some way, some way for a connection to. To happen again that's probably a good thing to pray for is uh healing there in that family okay. i feel like i've kind of been in between the two mary will send me some information and she'll say well i know 
this will never get on to my brother. So I send him a note and say, I have heard, <laughs> I don't say from whom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to do that all the time when, <laughs> at work. <laughs> Teachers come and tell you a lot that, that that's going on with one problem or another, and then you have to talk to another teacher about it, but you have to find a way to do it without saying who you heard it from. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Mary. <laughs> I'm starting to get good at it. <laughs> finding, <one> in the <laughs> finding ways to have to, yeah, <laughs> say something without saying something. <laughs> Hard game being in the middle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of ask for like just a personal prayer to um just for me for tomorrow. We have a huge event that we're doing um at the temple. It's a preschool fundraiser. So I have religious school in the morning and then we have our preschool fundraiser scheduled for the same day. And it's going to go until like five o'clock, but it's, it's pretty much like a festival. Um, and we have, an, um, we have a lot of stuff there. Um, a whole bunch of food trucks coming to live performances. It's really like a fair festival. Um, and it's going to be huge. And now we're seeing it's supposed to rain. So we're, um, trying to prepare for that a bit, but um, I'm not worried about how the day is going to go, whether it goes well or not, because that's that's in God's hands what he needs for the school. Um, but uh, I just would like some prayers just for like s safety for my health. Um, I stayed home from church today because I was just trying to get as much rest as possible. I'll be at work tomorrow from 730 in the morning and I probably won't be home till about seven at night and it's just going to be going all day and um, it was a really rough week too with getting ready um, and doing all the last minute finalizing of stuff. Teachers weren't even coming to me. <laughs> They, I don't know what I looked like, but they, they kept saying that a look, I had a look on my face and they didn't want to bother me. And it's just because I was like always at my computer and making phone calls and I must have looked stressed, but I wasn't trying to. <laughs> so, um, so just please prayers for tomorrow. The day will come and go and everything will be done with. And then I have Monday off also, but I just don't want to throw anything, you know, it into propulsion, you know, with sometimes with what my health will get kooky and what it'll do. So I do pray ask for, for prayer. Mm -hmm. Would you pray for the um, 29ers are going to meet at Camp Osavo this week? Really? It's how starting. many? Uh, how many times a year do they do they go? Usually a, a couple of times. Wow. Okay. Are you guys going? Yes. Yeah, we're leaving early in the morning. Wow. Tomorrow? Yes. Wow, okay. For a week? For a week. And they will leave Camp Asabo and go to another camp. But we're just going to do the one week at Camp Asabo. Okay. All right, any other prayers? or praises. All right, well, let's, um, let's close the Sabbath. We'll bow our heads in prayer. We'll lift up um, these people and our families and friends and, and, um, and, and the Sabbath. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for your wonderful word, for your wonderful son, for your amazing plan of redemption and the amazing love that you have for us and that the love that you are. We appreciate so much, Father, that you um, are, are willing and patient with us to teach us about you that despite the times we may turn from you or forget about you, you are so kind and loving and merciful to continue pressing in our lives, to 
continue pulling us to you. Uh, we, we praise you, Father, for however you do it and whatever you are always doing to keep our minds on you and to keep our lives in the path that you need us to be. We don't understand it, but we trust you and we believe you and we love you because of all the ways that you love us and everything that you've done. So we praise you, Father, first and foremost, and we're so thankful that we can come to you together in prayer. We're thankful, Lord, that whatever it is that's done when, when um, two or more are gathered in your name, we're thankful for it, Father, because we know that you are here with us and we know that your, your power is so much greater than anything that Satan can ever try to do to hurt any one of us or anyone that we love. And we thank you, Lord, because we would not believe that if, um, if you haven't taught us about you and helped us to come to understand that we can believe you in that. So, Father, as we lift up these, the names of these people and the silent prayers of, of those that we love, Lord, we, we just thank you. We're, we're going to ask you to help them, Lord, but we've been asking. And, and so more so, Father, we're just thanking you because we know that you are working in their lives. We know that you are doing everything possible on your end to, to guard them, to guide them, and to teach them of your love. And we thank you, Father, that as much as you have uh, helped us to or caused us to love them, we thank you that you love them even more than we ever could. Because we know with that love, you will just do anything and go to the ends of the earth in order to save them. So Father, I lift up everyone here tonight and those that couldn't make it um, for the Bonita Springs Church for uh, John and Marilyn's church also, and for the Besser family's church that they go to, for um, uh, Juan Jr. and Wes's churches as well, and the churches that we hold dear in our hearts from other places we've been in the past. All of your children that believe in your truth, believe in your word through the, the message of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we, we lift them up to you, all of them, Lord. And we ask you to hold us close to you, Father, please. And we lift up Raphael and Kelly. And we lift up Michelle and Pauline. We lift up Carol Brecher, Renee and Scott. We lift up Mackenzie and Susan and her family. We lift up Milagros. Clyde and his wife. We, we put the 29ers and John and Marilyn into your hands and the people that uh, they will all be working with and, and helping. Lord, uh, we give you our families and we give you our friends. We give you our children and our grandchildren. All of the people that you have made so important to us in our hearts. We give them to you, Lord. And all of these people are in need of you, Father, for physical healing, emotional healing. They need your strength. They need your love to be upon them, to comfort them, Lord, and to shed light into, into um, their minds just in some way um, whether it's someone who doesn't know you or one of us here that we're lifting in prayer that that knows you, Father, there's always a way that you can teach us more of you. And Lord, when you when you teach us, Father, it's always a a wonderful revelation to learn more of you and it and it solidifies our hope and trust and faith in you more. So Father, come into the lives of these people and guide them and 
and give them whatever it is that they need in order for them to glorify your name. And Father, I also ask for um, uh, traveling prayers also for Pastor Juan and Martina as they go away for a few weeks. And Lord, please be with them and um, give them guidance, Lord, on what they need to, who they need to help and, and where they need to be, uh, where they're going. So that um, your name is glorified along the path that they're taking um, as they travel and as they reach their destination. Father, we thank you so much for this Sabbath day once again because um, we know that you have been working out special things within all of our hearts and minds that we're not even aware of. We just want to be with you on the Sabbath and we know you want to be with us, but we know you're perfecting us in your Sabbath. And Father, please prepare us for the week ahead. Whatever trials are, uh, are going to come our way, whatever situations we're going to be in, Lord, give us your, your perfect peace, your perfect assurance, your perfect love. Put that into our hearts, Father, that wherever we go and whoever we speak to, your light will be shining through us and through the words that we speak and they will hear you and know you lord turn their hearts to you father and we ask all of this lord in jesus's name because of what he died and the blood he, uh, the blood he shed for our sake we can thank you for this lord amen amen thank you mary